I carve this cup with the blood of Christ. And I seal any open demonic portal with the blood of Christ. Folks, I have actually scoped about this in the past. I remember getting up at 5 in the morning at one point and feeling impressed by the Holy Spirit to talk about this. I remember when I saw, when I first saw this image, I found that the perfect illustration of what a, pen, what a pet sin is for somebody and what it does to the person. And I think on my old uh, IG, I posted about it. A pet sin is something that very dangerous that you consider almost a pet that you think you have control over it. Not understanding that it have control over you. And you take it out for walks and you feed it and you coddle it and you sleep with it. And then one day that pet sin bites you. It bites the hand that feeds it. Because that's what, that's what sin does, it destroys you. But in this case, it's uh, a little boy with a huge python. And the python, he considers it a pet. And he sleeps with the pet in his bed and what he lets it. And he lets it um, wrap itself around him. I don't know if this child is... This is years ago. This is at least six, seven years ago. I don't know what's going on with the child now. I don't know if they have, if they've ever had an incident with the with the animal, and the parents were honest enough to make it public. I don't know. What I do know is that generally pythons will grab you, will measure you um, when you're sleeping. I heard the story from an acquaintance that her friend called her terrified. She had a python, and it was a large python, but she kept it, she thought it was domesticated. She kept it uh, in a cage and whatnot. One night she wakes up, the python is lying next to her in bed, like sprawled out, and, and it was almost her size. And she asked uh, the veterinarian, I'm just curious, is it, is it, are, are these, are snakes capable of showing affection? Is that what it was doing, my pet python? And the vet told her, no, the python is measuring you, is, is seeing if it can eat you yet or not, if it's big enough to eat you, to swallow you whole. And that's, that absolutely terrified her. That is what a pet sin does. You think you can control it. You think that you can keep it in a cage. You think you can take a wild sin and domesticate it. But all the time, it's looking for a chance to swallow you whole. You think, oh, you know, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not a full blackout drunk. But every once in a while, I'll have too much to drink. But I'm always, I always make sure that the, that I have somebody with me who will make sure that I get home safely and does nothing happens to me. Until one day something happens to you because you're so careless with your with alcohol, and you're unwilling to accept that it does have control over you and you don't have control over it. Um, you know what? I enjoy watching. My guilty pleasure is these soap operas. And I know that the Lord doesn't approve of me watching adultery play out on screen and greed and violence. But it's not like I'm actually committing any of those sins. It's not like I'm actually committing adultery by watching this couple, this fictitious couple on television, commit adultery. You know what else is akin to watching a couple committing adultery on screen? Watching porn. I don't care how the angles of the camera are so you never see complete nudity. The act itself that it's implying is pornography. And you are watching it. But you don't call it pornography. You call it a soap opera. Let me tell you something. Whatever comes in through the eyes is going to ripple to your spirit. So you can tell yourself that you're not committing sin by watching this. But spiritually, you are. Remember what the Apostle Paul said. The Bible is very clear about what your eyes can intake. That's why Job made a covenant with his eyes. I just recently, a few days ago, had a revelation about making a covenant with my eyes. 
to the point that I've had to remove people that I've been following because some of the stuff they post is just irritating to my spirit. And it's not folks that that you know are are, are downright showing anything um, excessive. It's just what it implies. It's just the words they use. It's irritating to my spirit. I don't I don't need to be seeing it. I don't need it in my timeline. I don't need it in my feed. Let's say I'm not a gossip father. I don't gossip. I don't talk about anybody. But I do enjoy buying those gossip magazines. It's entertaining to me. That's all. That's all I do. It's watch entertainment. Let me tell you something. The same way you wouldn't want somebody talking about you and your problems, that's that's how the person that you're that you're being entertained by their story. That's how that person feels. I don't care how famous they are. I don't care how much you believe that once they become famous, they forfeit the right to have privacy. We're all human beings. We all suffer. We all cry. We all endure pain and hardship. No matter how much money we have, a, a, a breakup hurts. Losing a child hurts. Losing a platform hurts. And it's, it's, it must be even more painful to know that people are enjoying your pain. If you sit back and think about what you're doing when you buy those gossip magazines, when you tune in those gossip channels, and I've had to be, uh, I've had to repent, and I've had to, and I've had to ask the Lord to forgive me for entertaining those those uh, even even the gossip, especially the gossip, the church gossip channels. I've had to cut all that out because you are being entertained and enjoying the pain of others. You know what that makes you? A sadist. These words may sound harsh because to you they're just pet sins. They're not that important. They're not that serious. Let me tell you to the holy God sitting on his throne looking at you doing all this. It is. It's very serious. I say this usually at the end of the year, but it's close enough to the end of the year, folks. Pet sins kill Put them 